uh, Morena, uh, Tena Kotu, uh, Kikauri, Otokohaka o Kai Kai o Waro, Ikahapu o Kai Tu Hai Tara, Mea Tuahuridi, Te Mandam Fenua, Tena Kotu, uh, Tena Kotu. Ka hui hui mai tātou katoa. He a poa mā, e tau mā e rauraka tēra mā tēnau koutou. Auntie Pat, that's a racy looking machine, that one. <coughs> Good morning everybody and um, welcome to this session, which is in two parts this morning. Uh, the first part is that uh, I'd like to introduce and um, acknowledge all of those sitting behind me uh, particularly Ta Tipini and uh, his team from Pai Korako, Takarei and his team uh, of Kaimahi from Te Ruranga or Naitahu who are involved in this project. At the Huia Iwi in Otako, uh, we presented the cultural mapping uh, project. And today, uh, we complete that task by presenting you, our whānau, with your website. <laughs> I mentioned in Dunedin all those years ago uh, that there was a reason, or a number of reasons, why we started the cultural mapping program. And that was because some of us weren't going to be around for a lot longer. And we decided there and then that we should ensure that all of that cultural information that we did not have available to us during the prosecution of Te Kiremi before the Waitangi Tribunal, which started in this place all those years ago, uh, was available to our future generations. And we've been able to complete that task to a standard where each of the regions now have in their hands their own uh, cultural mapping reports in draft form for them to uh, sign off on so that we can then add to the website. Secondly, uh, part two of our presentation this morning is all about a book that has been produced by some of our kaimahi behind us. And this book, uh, Takata Ngaitahu, uh, is, has been launched. It was launched uh, formally at uh, a function in Ōtautahi on Thursday night. But again, we would like to present that wonderful publication to you all. If your poa or toa or mother or father is not in that book, remember this is only the start of our journey. There's a long way to travel, and many of you may be in the book in the future. Kia ora tātou. Uh, kia ora no tātou, uh, tēnei te mihi ki e koutou, uh, te mana whenua torohi nei, te nai tuariri, uh, tēnei te mihi. Uh, kia ora no tātou, my name is uh, Tākarei Norton, and I have the privilege of speaking uh, after David and um, as part of our uh, rupu here, uh, our archive team in the Paikoraku uh, on the Kahuru Manu, our Naitohu cultural mapping website. Uh, over the last few years, we've been researching and uh, mapping Māori place names throughout the whole tribal Takiwa, working with all of our different marae. Um, and we've now been able to put that into a website, uh, into a Naitohu digital atlas for our people to use for whatever you want to use it for. Um, I'm going to play a short video, it goes about six minutes, uh, and it gives a, uh, an introduction into the whole culture mapping project and what it's all about. Uh, then after that, we are going to look at uh, all the place names that we've mapped, uh, and then we'll do a live demonstration uh, in the website. A uh, few technical issues, but I'm sure it's all under control. Um, so we'll play the video, and we'll be back uh, shortly in about five minutes. Kia ora tato.
a lot of people have asked me what cultural mapping is all about. Uh, and it's about gathering all that knowledge and those traditions and histories of our people across the whole Rohe that we weren't able to collect and collate during the prosecution of the claim. The basic reserves for Maoridom were set at the sea coast or around rivers and lakes where their natural food was. And what's happened to all that land since then, Drew? A lot of it has basically passed into European hands. Uh, some of it is still retained by Maoridom, uh, but not a lot. The gathering of place names went on as I was going around finding evidence. When we found a whole list of place names, we would bring them in and throw them in the box so that we could go back eventually and have a look at what that all meant. The real issue about that was is that the memory map, what was known to Maridam in the very early days because there was no written word, was the place names and the history and the stories of the Mahinga Kai. So it was important to show where the history was and where all this Mahinga Kai went on and Utapas, old occupation sites, all that stuff. So that, that was pretty important, was to show how they viewed the land very early on, before they could write. For Māori, and Kaitahu in particular, and to Waipaunamu, the names are, the, uh, uh, are more than just signposts uh, in, in, in the landscape. Names carry heritage and history. They're what people call mnemonics. The name triggers a whole lot of associated memory. So the critical thing for us is there's so much of our naming in our landscape actually carries our heritage and our story. The mapping project started uh, out of ten review. We were having a few troubles of the high country past releases and with the local marais we decided to map uh, all of our cultural values in the high country to give us better guidance on how we can protect our values and then from there we extended the project to cover the whole of the Maitahi Takua. The technology is awesome. I mean we, we, uh, we never had that experience when we were growing up and when you can actually ride a poakai up the, the Waitaki Valley to our Tupuna Lakes and right up to Oldaki and over the top of the passes into Taio Potini, that, that's pretty special. I mean our pai pai sit and, and just watch in awe as you guys with all the technology can uh, produce that stuff for us. It's amazing. So the Naito Atlas, the idea for that came out of the Naito Cultural Summit held at Pukatauraki in 2012 where our people explained that they wanted to create a digital atlas of Naito place names out of the uh, culture mapping project. So since then uh, we've been working towards creating a digital atlas of all of our place names uh, throughout Taipanamu. The technological advances have just streamlined it so much. It's just, it's just gone here leaps and bounds. And what we've got now, we've, it's actually going to be a incredibly valuable tribal resource, uh, but the process is just so easy to do now. Uh, all you need is someone capable of utilising, leading the technolog technology, and uh, the rest of us are just happy to uh, bask in the uh, glory of that uh, being available. When you look at the work that has been done on the cultural mapping, and you had to put that, say, onto an A4 sheet of paper. I would say you'd probably run into 100,000 pages. It is huge. I have had people asking me questions about how we control it. I'm not sure if control is a word. I think it's how we share it. How we share it so that it still is ours. 
I think in the past we have locked stuff up and not shared it. And we're actually trying to find that way of doing it now. We'll all have to sit down and think about it, but we probably will end up sharing it with the world. I get, but I think it will always be ours. Probably more than I expected to happen. What I've got to thank is the people who have been confident enough to find material for us to add to it. That is a huge, huge help. So about uh, five years ago, uh, Pukataraki, uh, we got given the task of building uh, a Naitohu Atlas. So that's been our focus for the last few years. Um, but before we show you that, I want to show you all the work that we've done. Uh, so Adrian's going to bring up uh, Google Earth with all of our maps we've mapped over the last uh, few years. So as you can see there, every red dot is a place name. Uh, there's over 5,500 place names that we've mapped throughout the whole tribal Takiwa. Uh, and Adrian will uh, zoom around and get a bit closer. These are names of uh, kainga, mahinga kai, rivers, lakes, mountains, pa. Every name must be referenced. We just don't go around and putting names on for the sake of it. Every name must have a reference. And they usually come from 19th century manuscripts, newspaper articles, uh, oral histories, uh, survey maps, maps to borrow our own tupuna. And if Adrian just slows down there, you see all these names will come up. And behind each name, there's a story and references to go with all that. But 5,500 names are uh, mapped all in our database uh, that sits behind the scenes. If Adrian, you bring up the trails. Nope, no trails in that one. Can try the BD map, Adrian. Do we yeah, zoom into that one, bud. So this here's a map of place names throughout Mudahiku in Otago. This was drawn by Harry Beatty. Beatty was one of the biggest powerhouses of uh, work on place names and histories, particularly down south. Every one of these names we've been able to map. Every name we found uh, in a newspaper article, in a published book, uh, in this unpublished material. But every one of these names have been mapped with all of them what I down south. Do you want to bring up the 1880 map, Adrian? And zoom up to Canterbury. This map here was drawn in 1879, 1880, under the supervision of Hori Kere Tairoa. It was for the Smith Nian Commission. And our people were mapping all of their kainga mahinga kai, all of their kainga nuhuanga uh, throughout Kempstead. Now, all of these names have been mapped as well. All of these names are recorded uh, in separate notebooks. We've been able to work our way all through all those notebooks and map all of these names uh, onto our mapping system. So with 5,500 names, we wanted to create a digital atlas out of that. And so for the last few years, we've been building a website to host this material. And we'll bring up my laptop, if we can. So this is our website here. We just gone live this morning. Um, on here, um, you can read about the different trails our people used. You can bring up the Naito Atlas, which has a thousand place names on there. It also has the original Māori uh, land allocations to our people. Um, and you can read about the story, the project itself, and biographies of the key people who have helped us out. And I just want to show you what the atlas looks like in here. This is the atlas. And as you zoom in, names will appear. This here, this is the narrative behind the Wairua Native Reserve 887. 
these green lines, these are the trails that people used to use. You can click on a trail, and just here, there's a narrative about that trail. You click on a place name, up pops a narrative of that place name in the left-hand column. And as you scroll down, these are all the references to that place name. And so the idea is you can look at a place name, you can read it, you can understand it, and if you want to get more information about it, you can. You can go to each of these references. And all of these references that we've used, these are all now held in our archive. What we've been doing is going through um, external institutions, their libraries, um, different museums, and finding information pertaining to our history and putting it into our archive so we can make that knowledge much more accessible uh, to our people. Um, up here is the search engine. So basically in here you can type a multi place name, an English place name, or a reserve, or your address. But we'll go um, Pure Pure Tahi, and it pops up. Click on that, and it takes you straight to Pure Pure Tahi, Milford Sound. And as you can see, there's a narrative behind that name as well. And as you zoom out, you can see the other names that will come up around here. It's a little bit slow at the moment. And you can just work around, click on a name. Oh, try that one. It's a little bit slow. But in here we have 1,000 uh, names you can research, uh, use. And the idea is that this is just a starting block. Oops, cut out. Just go to Adrian, that's all good. Here we go here. So this is the w website here. Um, you can click in here. And you can read about the whole project and how it's came about. Oh, nice no, cut out as well. Okay. These here are the different trails. You can click in here, and all the different trails will pop up. And you can read about books and manuscripts relating uh, to each of these uh, different trails and that. But the, um, the other thing we've been doing as well is that we've been mapping. We've been mapping all these place names. We always identify who the Naito informant is. Because what usually happens is that all the Pākehā historians and gatherers get all the mana uh, and get all the credit for doing all this work. But it's our people that's given them all this information and knowledge. So what we've always done is that when we can, we record and identify who the Naito informant is. And the idea is that you'll be able to click on that person's name and read a biography of that person. Um, and this year, what we've been working on is a book called Tangata Naitahu, uh, where we put together 50 Naito biographies. And in that book, there are some of the key place of informants. Raori Tamamaru, Raori Tamari, uh, Tohudu Hudu, uh, Iruira Puko Cameron. Um, and the idea is that when you click on a place name, you can read about it, you can see the informant, have the book in your hand, and read about that person. And the whole idea is to create this network of Naito knowledge that sort of flows um, and connects all up together. So what we'll do now, we'll get Helen to present um, the Tangata Naito book. And if we get this up and running, I might come back and finish this off at the end. But I would like to thank um, all the whānau who have helped us out over the years. We've had numerous mapping hui. Uh, we've had jet boat rides, helicopter trips. Um, we've gone um, boat trips everywhere around the island, just mapping place names, recording them. So thank you, everyone, for all their support. Uh, the Pai Kōrako for looking after us over the last few years um, and guiding us through this journey. Um, and our archive team as well, um, who this year not only have we installed an archive database. Um, we've got this website up and running and also produced uh, a book, biography's book, Tangata Naitahu, um, and a calendar. So we've worked uh, pretty hard over the years. So I'd just like to acknowledge the whole team for their hard work. And we'll get Helen to come up and talk about Tangata Naitahu. All good? Sure. Uh, Um, my name's Helen Brown and I'm part of the archive team. Very proud to be part of the archive team, especially today. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you briefly about uh, Tangata Ngaitau, the people of Ngaitau, uh, which we um, formally launched on Thursday evening at Koka Gallery in Christchurch. Um, it's been the culmination of 10 months of hard work on the part of our team, and um, I'm going to reiterate much of what I actually said at the launch um, the other evening, so aroha mai if you were present at that event also. So Tangata Ngaitau is uh, the work of many hands through the collaborative efforts of Te Pai Korako, uh, the archive team, Waira Te Runanga o Ngaitahu staff and whānau, we have together produced a truly beautiful book. Um, whānau have been at the heart of the project and um, many of you have been involved are here uh, with us today. The front cover of the book, which you saw earlier, um, mirrors the walls in many of our fam family homes, Runanga Halls and Whareneui, where photographs of our tūpuna watch over the activities of their descendants. These family galleries illustrate the whakapapa of Ngaitahu Whānui. They connect the living with those who have passed away and are a focal point for conversation, memories and storytelling. They are also treasured taonga, so when Fano started taking down precious framed portraits from their lounge walls for us to reproduce in the pages of this book, we knew Tangata Ngaitahu was destined to succeed. In early 2017, the Ngaitahu Archive team and Bridget Williams Books agreed to work together to jointly publish a book of Ngaitahu biographies to coincide with the 20th anniversary of the Ngaitahu Deed of Settlement. In discussion with our team and Te Pai Kōrako, uh, Takare and I then embarked on the difficult task of selecting 50 people whose stories would feature in this, the first volume of Tan Tangata Ngaitahu. Um, alongside some well-known tribal figures, we agreed that it was important to include those who were actively involved at a hapu or whānau level so that their contributions would not fade from tribal memory. Together, these people trace the diverse trajectory through time, kaupapa, geography and whakapapa. Among them are the ordinary yet extraordinary and those whose status within the, within the iwi is legendary. Uh, despite warfare, colonisation, land loss, and the fight for te kiremi. These individuals continued to live, love, lead, create, protest, play sport, and gather kai. Many lived their, their lives altruistically, giving time, resources, and support to their whānau, hapu, and iwi, and more broadly to their local, national, and international communities. All are interconnected by whakapapa. Collectively, the biographies in Tangata Ngaitahu span 200 years of tribal history, shedding new light on some old faces and bringing others into the light for the first time. Uh, there are 50 of them, and I'm going to list them now. Uh, Wharitutu Newton, Karetai, Tuhawaiki, Tōpi Pātuki, Tuhuruhuru, Matiaha Tiere Morihu, Rawari Te Mairi, Merikihiri Ka Hape, uh, Hori Kere Taeroa, Tohi Te Marama, Kuru Pohatu Ruru, Meri Hapa, William Te Paro Spencer, Tieki Pukurako, Hone Tare Tikao, Hoane Machu, Ameria Puhiriri Hokianga, John Poao Rakiraki, Rahira Muriwai Morrison, Hariata Pitini Morera, Tione Matapura Allison, Iruera Poku Cameron, Eva Skerritt, Rokura Gillies, Magda Woolscott, Tom Robinson, Frank Winter, Maury Pickering, Morris Porthio, Bob Feiteri, Ricky Allison, Doug Sinclair, Alva Belsham, Bill Torepi, Kira Brown, Faritutu Sterling, Mahana Walsh, Eddie Harpati Rehu Murchi, Marama Higgins, Kelly Anglam, Kath Brown, Maru Sterling, George Tio, Hienari Robinson, Bill Solomon, Maria Tinney, Anna Rouse, Kelly Davis, and our late friend uh, and mentor in terms of the archives teamwork, Trevor House. Uh, the descendants, whanaunga, and friends of all of these people have been central to the creation of Tangata Ngaitahu. Um, interviews and conversations have taken place at kitchen tables from Rotorua to Awarua uh, over numerous cups of tea. 
The research pro process has also involved hundreds of emails and phone conversations with Ngātou Whānui throughout New Zealand and overseas. Working so closely with Fano has been one of the most rewarding aspects of the work. Family albums have been opened and shared, and many wonderful photographs appear in the pages of the book. We've been privileged to hear anecdotes and stories too numerous to squeeze into the constraints of a thousand words. So each um, biography in the book is just a thousand words. Uh, but yeah, many of the tupuna in these pages deserve an entire volume dedicated to their lives and achievements. So we acknowledge the enormous contribution from Fano and friends who have supported Tangata Ngaitahu. This is your book, Ngā Mihi Nui Ki A Kaitau Katoa. In addition to the many photographs sourced from family collections and the Ngaitahu archive, a number of images have also been reproduced from libraries, archives, museums and other institutions in New Zealand and overseas. And as Takarei said before, um, that's been part of our work of the archives team is finding material that's located in other institutions and bringing it, bring it in to our archive, but then pushing it back out, making it accessible to Ngaitahu Whanui. Um, yeah, there's also been a huge amount of help from other archival institutions, um, libraries and museums throughout New Zealand, and a number of images in the book have been specially um, photographed. So Taonga have been photographed, manuscripts have been digitised uh, for the purposes of the book, but also to um, facilitate the ongoing access for other projects and um, to be brought into the Ngaitau archive. Uh, special thanks to, um, to the Ministry for Culture and Heritage for granting us permission to publish edited versions of 12 biographical essays from the Dictionary of New Zealand Biography. Uh, and we acknowledge the authors of those essays, uh, Tipini O'Regan, Raina Faituri, Ethel Anderson, Janet Winter, and the late Harry Everson. Um, special thanks to Tipini for his mentorship and for writing the foreword uh, to the book, which provides a personal perspective and also articulates the aspirations of Te Pai Kōrako and the archives team in preparing this book. Um, also, also thanks to Mike Stevens, who wrote biographies for the book, but also prepared uh, a short history of Ngaitahu Whānui, which appears um, at the front of the book and appropriately sets the stage for the biographies that follow. Um, thank you to all of our other contributing authors, Kirsty Dunn, Robin Walsh, Roy Matakirikiri, Dan Bartlett, Angela Skerritt Tainui, Maiora Pukitapu Dentis, uh, Emma Wyeth and Nicole Mackay. We're indebted to um, many, many people um, whom I won't uh, list uh, again um, now, but um, our thanks, uh, our huge thanks are due to Te Pai Kōrako for their ongoing uh, guidance and support. Um, there are copies of the book available um, at our stall. Uh, it's also available via the Ngaitau Bookstore. Um, part, really the central kaupapa of the work of the archive team is about making our uh, knowledge and information accessible to Ngaitau Whānui, and that's why we're selling the book at cost price, so it's just $24.99. Um, the book will retail in bookstores for $39.99, so it makes an excellent Christmas gift, we think. Um, one final note uh, regarding the book. Um, contributing authors include esteemed tribal historians, archive team staff, history students, and several Fano members writing for publication here for the first time. While all care and diligence has been taken in preparing the content for the book, there are multiple sides to every story, and it is perhaps inevitable that some readers will have recollections or knowledge at variance to what is recorded in the book. It is therefore our hope that the small glimpse of these tipuna that Tangata Ngaitahu provides will inspire conversation and the sharing of stories and memories beyond the pages of this book. Uh, it's been an absolute privilege to work on Tangata Ngaitahu, and I'm looking forward to working on the next instalment. Um, as I said, a number of Fano members um, wrote biographies for the book, and I'm now going to ask um, Robin Walsh, who is um, one of those Fano members, um, to just give some personal recollections about her experience. Kia 
Kia ora On behalf of the whānau contributors to this fabulous book, Tangata Naitahu, I would like to take a few minutes just to thank Takarei Helen and my fellow archive team members, Tania, Jill, Liz, Morris and Dan, for the opportunity to write the biography of my mother, Dorothy Temahana Walsh, or Mana, as she was more commonly known. I would also like to acknowledge the support and encouragement given to me by all of my brothers and sisters, especially Tama and Jennifer. Mum was a remarkable woman who lived a long and full life. It was a privilege to be in the position as an archives team member to be able to sit down and record an oral history interview with her in August of 2015. She was 92 years old. It still overwhelms me when I think that six short months later she was gone. I am incredibly grateful that I was able to capture some of her oldest memories as she shared snapshots of her life with me from when she was a baby of 18 months of age right up until near the end of her life. Mum was always so wise and articulate. She was sharp as a whip, very knowledgeable and clued up about what was going on in the world of Naitahu. And she always managed to get her point across without being condescending or judgmental of others. It gives my whanau and I great pleasure to still be able to listen to her voice as she and I reminisced and talked about her life achievements together or to hear her laughter as we stopped the recording for a visitor knocking on the door, or a break for a cup of tea and a scone that could quite possibly have been baked a few years before. <laughs> her voice is there for posterity, for all her mokopuna and the generations ahead. These biographies shared here in Tangata Naitahu are now timeless written down for all to see and to remember. These people who shaped our iwi and who brought us to the place we are now, simply priceless. I hope when you read these biographies that you will be inspired and encouraged to sit down with your parents, grandparents, kaumatua and whānau and to talk to them about their lives, who they were, what they did whether they were statesmen or builders, teachers or PAs, like my late sister Nicola, our mothers and fathers. It's like whakapapa, knowledge about ourselves, memories of the past that no, must not be lost and that links us all together. It's been a privilege and honour to now have my second piece of work published. This is so, so much better than my teenage angst poem, The Pain of Loneliness. <laughs> Enjoy the book and happy reading, everyone. Nga mihi nui, kia koutou. What you have been watching here this morning is a beginning. We're only making a start on the process of building a Naitahu search engine by which we can reclaim control of our own knowledge about ourselves and uh, what you're looking here is the foundations of that. I've written several times elsewhere that one of the things that happened to us in the 19th century was that the Kaitahu, the Naitahu claim, 
uh, became our culture. We were so fixed with it for so long that in fact the primary expression of our culture was through the claim. And one of the things post-settlement that we've had to do is to engage more fully in the business of reinventing ourselves, not locked in a grievance mode, but in a growth mode and dreaming of what we want to be and how we want to be as a people. And as I've said before, now we're not crippled by the prospect of running out of muskets. Now, in this whole process of redevelopment of ourselves, one of the things we have to do is to conserve our knowledge as we go, and as well as recovering it. So the book you've just heard about spoken most eloquently. We hope every two years to do another 50 biographical essays. Right? And at the forthcoming meeting of the Pai Korako, we will start the business of making the list of those 50 and organizing the writers because we don't want to be doing it under the pressure we've done it here. My thinking behind this, and the reason I've advocated it to my colleagues, has been I spent nearly a decade as the convener of the dictionary, the Māori editorial uh, committee. I was the convener of that for the Dictionary of New Zealand Biography. And I was constantly aware of the fact that when the nation came to do its next dictionary of New Zealand biography, we should not be in the position where we were, where we didn't have the references. We didn't have the detail. People had lost the obituary notices. There was no record of people as they left. Now, I don't want to be in one of these things, at least until the third edition, possibly because the general rule is you've got to be dead to get into one. <laughs> and having had a rough year last year and survived that bullet, I've got no desire to bring it on again. But the important thing is that we've got to build the record as we go. This needs organisation, it needs system. And that's the systems that we are building as we build towards a Naitahu search engine. We have shown you today the volume of biographies. We have shown you the beginnings, the beginnings only, of a Naitahu cultural atlas of our own rohe, of our own history. I irritated Takare this morning by going immediately when I wanted to see the app on my phone I went immediately to Kaihinu, the first place we occupied in this island. Unfortunately, you see, it's now under the mana whenua of Te Awa and in the Queen Charlotte Sounds, and Takare has become incredibly culturally sensitive lately, so he hasn't put that into the map yet, because apparently we've got to go and ask the buggers. <laughs> so much for cultural consultation and my general view of it. But the point is, we've got this kind of access which can give us a whole volume of references behind nearly every name. And we've got a lot to do. 5,000 is not much. Just working through the Mahika Kai lists and references we've got from the Smith Nairn Commission, Commission is another half a lifetime for someone to get onto that site. But beyond that, there's all the dialectical references, what our old people called Pākehā sailing ships, uh, as distinct from North Island people did, what our people called a cat against what the others did. I, I once sat up at Tuhoi 
et ufi ara ima raena sitte hova sitte ara he ato iko to karehene and I pointed to the dog you see the puppy and he says he looked at me and he said hey puppy I said kiamato ta kuri kuri and I looked at the cat on the, uh, sitting on the sun by the front of the meeting house. I said, Eh, Hatin. Hengeru. To us, Naki. From the stalking movement. Different reasons completely. But when he said Hengeru, the next word he said, Yeah. Kitafano. He put he. There's words like that. There's all those different words, 20 odd different words for snow and ice. In the North Island, too. With all these collections of facts about us, our plants, the origins and making of poha, our different names for stones our knowledge of our own stone resources, all of this sort of knowledge gathered back in, pulled back in, recovered from archives, recovered from universities, recovered from other places. We don't own this knowledge, but we're its primary proprietors. It's ours because we are who we are in this place. And the whole idea of a Naitahu search engine is that we should control as the primary owners, the knowledge that pertains to us. And regaining that and rebuilding it is actually means that you have rakatira taka, you have autonomy, you have control, and you have mana over yourselves. That's the dream. Culture must be cultivated. And we're here building tools for, for that. My message I gave you the other day is we must remember to remember that we've got to keep working at it. What you have seen this morning is our beginning. A koto kato e poa ma e toa ma. Tene te mihi atu. Tene te mihi atu. Kioratato auraki matatu. Ki matatū ki ora tātai te whare.